Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine and in this video I'm going to show you my progress so far in creating the new design for the game's user interface. So up until now all of the UI panels that I've been using in the game have just been placeholders which is why none of them look particularly nice. They were all very quickly implemented and they're all rather dark and gloomy so over the next couple of months my goal is to completely overhaul these visuals and come up with something hopefully a lot nicer and brighter and maybe even a bit more professional looking. But my first task was just to work out what the new look, what the new style of the UI is going to be and that's what I've been doing since the last video. I started this process at the beginning of October so clearly it's taken a while the main reason being that I just find visual design quite difficult. I mentioned it back when I was working on the 3D graphics that the artistic side of things is a bit of a weakness of mine and that's unfortunately even more the case when it comes to 2D art. My only real prior experience of UI design was when I worked on Aquilinox which had a very simple user interface. You can see that it's almost entirely made up of plain coloured blocks some very simple icons, most of which I found online for free, and some text. And that's not to say that I'm not happy with it, I think it ended up looking perfectly acceptable, but I don't think this style would fit that well with the homegrown graphics, or with the gameplay really. Um, plus this time I'd like to push myself a bit further, try and achieve a slightly more creative look for homegrown, and hopefully even improve my design skills a bit along the way. So. I started off the process by first finalising the plans for the layout of the UI, what panel goes where and where all the different options are going to be found. In general it's pretty similar to how things are in the game right now, uh, the biggest difference is probably the inventory which is on the move once again. Initially back at the start of development I didn't plan to have an on screen inventory at all, all of your items were kept in the house. but. After trying that out in the game I realised it was a bit of a hassle every time you wanted to change tools so I added a small inventory bar at the bottom of the screen then it got moved to the side to allow it to have more slots uh, but now I don't think those extra slots are going to be necessary so it's moving back down to the bottom again. With the plans for the layout complete I then moved on to the main task of deciding what the UI should look like. Throughout development I've been collecting together images of UI from other games whenever I've seen a UI that I thought looked nice uh, to help provide me with some inspiration for my own design. So I spent a lot of time looking through those images, I also found a really useful website that has a whole database of screenshots from other games showing their UIs which was incredibly useful and I invested quite a bit of time in trying to soak up these good examples of how it should be done and getting some ideas of which of these styles might work in homegrown and which of these styles I could actually achieve myself. With a few ideas in mind I began building up a full draft for the new UI just in an image editing software to start with and I did this over the course of about a week just by iterating and iterating and iterating, trying out different designs for the components seeing what worked, getting rid of stuff that didn't work and improving and building on the things that I thought had potential, constantly trying out different approaches and colours and icon styles until finally I ended up with a design that I thought had a bit of promise. And this is it here, so I'll just quickly talk through my thinking behind some of the design choices that I made. So in general I was going for something quite clean and simple, nice and rounded, and a little bit playful, I thought that would best fit with the style of the gameplay and the 3D graphics. For the item icons I decided to just go with images made directly from 3D models, I thought that would make the most sense because they're meant to be representations of the objects in the 3D world anyway, plus it makes it a lot easier for me, I'm much better at making 3D models than I am at making 2D icons. I then ended up giving them quite a thick outline which I'm still deliberating over and for some of them I tried giving them a cell shaded look which I think I actually prefer when looking at the icons on their own but the rest of the game doesn't have cell shading so I'm still not sure about that. For the button icons I initially tried using clip art style coloured icons like I did for the money and the clock displays 
but I struggled quite a lot to make the icons myself with my limited experience, plus with all the different colours in the icons I found it quite hard to make it all look coherent. It was a lot of colours on the screen, it felt like there was a bit too much going on, so I ended up going with the super simple icons again, which I'm able to make myself without too much difficulty. You can also find lots of them online and easily adjust them to your needs, plus it's obviously very easy to fit them into the colour scheme. One thing I did try to give them a bit more personality was to use the icon as a stencil and draw around it by hand, creating a slightly less perfect version of the icon, which I think kind of works. It's a bit more informal, a bit more organic maybe. Um, I also tried it out with the buttons here, but I'm still undecided, so you can let me know what you think about that. Another thing I noticed when looking at the UI of other games was that they often have some little shape or pattern that shows up a lot, kind of like a unique signature. So that's what I was trying to do with these little wavy bits. I thought that it might add a little bit of visual interest while making the whole UI feel coherent and consistent. That was the idea anyway. So overall I was pretty happy with the design that I'd managed to come up with, but I'd been working on it for so long that I'd completely lost the ability to look at it objectively anymore. So at the end of that week I posted it on my social media channels and waited over the weekend to see what everyone else thought of the new look. On Monday morning I went through all of the feedback and I was relieved to see that generally the response was very positive because I really had no desire to try and come up with another design from scratch. And I also got loads of useful feedback, little tips and tweaks that I could make to improve the design, so a big thank you to everyone who took the time to help me out there. The most common bit of feedback was that the fertiliser tags here look a bit too much like buttons, which they're not meant to be, they're just showing what fertilisers are contained in the compost, so I'll need to change the design a bit for them. And then there were also quite a few comments mentioning accessibility and readability issues, for example, the white text on the light green here might be a bit hard to read, so that's definitely something I'll try to be more conscious of when I'm implementing the UI. Overall though, the feedback made me confident enough to get started with the implementation process, so I began adding some of the basics of the UI into the actual game. I still wasn't 100% sure on the colour scheme though, so I wanted to implement the UI in such a way that it would still be really easy to change the colours and try out different looks. So for the town button for example, instead of exporting this whole thing as a single texture to use in the game, I instead broke it down into its component parts so that I could then apply colour to them individually in the code, in the shaders. So for example I first implemented the displays here in the top left and I can easily change their colours in the code, much quicker of course than having to update all of the texture files. Next I implemented the town button, which took me an entire day. I'm using the UI library that I made for the city builder, which is decent and I definitely don't want to have to redo it from scratch like I've done for other systems, but it is four years ago since I wrote it, so there are a few things that I would do differently now and I'm going to be making some improvements to it as I go. So for example with the town button I was doing a bit of maintenance on the animation system so that I could add this nice animation effect to the icon. I worked on the buttons for the bottom bar next, this one to open and close the inventory and these two to allow you to toggle between object examining mode and tile examining mode. Then I started programming the new inventory hotbar before realising that it was actually going to be quite a big job and I reminded myself that one of the upcoming updates is going to be all about the inventory anyway. So. I decided to leave it until then, and for now I've just taken the old inventory, popped it down at the bottom and recoloured it a bit. So that obviously doesn't look like the draft version yet. In the draft I added some random rotation to the slots backgrounds, which I couldn't do yet because the UI library doesn't support rotations right now. And in the draft I also had the item icons extending outside of the slots, which in theory I think looks quite nice but in practice it threw up a few issues, such as the stack numbers then being outside of the slot and being quite hard to read against the grass colour, so I'll need to give them some darker outline or something. 
I kept working on these basic UI components for a few more days, tweaking colours and sizes, and to be honest at this stage things were getting a little bit aimless, so I took a step back and decided that I probably need to move on from this update because it had been going on for way too long, so long that the leaves on the trees had turned brown when they were pretty green at the start of this video, and I just wasn't really getting anywhere, I was getting really bogged down in the little details like colours and animations, and finding it all a bit frustrating because I still don't really know what I'm doing or what makes a UI look nice, but as I said, it's time to move on now, time to draw a line under this update. I shouldn't really be stressing about all of the little details when there are still some big fundamental UI concepts to work on, such as the main menu, which is what I'm going to be moving on to next. The game currently doesn't even have a placeholder main menu, so that should definitely be my main priority right now. So this is how the UI looks at the moment, after stage one of the UI overhaul. An improvement for sure, but there's still a long way to go. But as I said, I'll be working on the UI until the end of the year at least, so there's plenty of time for more changes and improvements. I also ended up creating a colour scheme system, which means I can create multiple colour schemes for the UI, and it's super easy to switch between them. So I can relax a bit about the colours at this stage, knowing that I'll always be able to very easily tweak and change them in the future, and they don't have to be set in stone right now. So that's going to be it for this video. Before I finish, I want to give a big thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Shadeless Fox, Kimo Tamio, Coda the Tyler, Ross from Two Minute Tabletop, Nikat Asgazada, Zanil Ambakar, Atomic Code, Walden Yan, Me the Pig, Chris Naismith, Alan Lance, Josiah Hillman, Wonuff, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, John Needham, Christoph Herpo, Adam Farkas, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connaughton, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajic, Sean McCrory, Caffeine Coda, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.